Good morning, thank you. <laughs> And welcome to our annual Creating Connections Breakfast. My name is Erin Van Eggman, and I'm proud to serve as the new Executive Director for the GRCC Foundation. Thank you. For so many of us, this is the event we look forward to each year. It's a day when we can show our love for our students and our donors. We are so happy to bring you both together today to connect in this special way. And today we have over 170 in attendance. So thank you for joining us so early this morning. But before we officially begin, begin our program, I wanna recognize a few groups of individuals that are here with us this morning. First, and they're just packing up, but how about the wonderful music you heard this morning? Yes. These amazing musicians are GRCC students. So we heard from our string quartet, directed by Dr. Libor Andres, and our guitar ensemble, directed by Jonathan Marshall. Thank you so much for adding your talents to this event. And next, I would like to recognize two groups of dedicated community leaders who work tirelessly on behalf of our students we serve. Would any current or former GRCC Board of Trustees members please stand or wave so we can recognize you? And would any current or former GRCC Foundation Board of Directors please stand or wave so we can recognize you? Thank you for what you do. And last but certainly not least, I would like to recognize a group of individuals who have dedicated years of outstanding service to GRCC, our retirees, or Golden Raiders as we affectionately call them. Would any retirees with us today please stand or wave so we can recognize you? So this morning is about you, our faithful and generous donors and our bright and resilient students. As we continue with our program this morning, you will hear directly from our students about the impact of the scholarship they received and how it's made a difference in their academic success. This is why we do what we do. But now it is my honor to introduce you to the 11th president of Grand Rapids Community College, Dr. Charles Lepper. Good morning. I know it's early, but we can do better than that. Good morning. Well, thank you all for being here and helping us to celebrate our students and their success, but also to say thank you to our generous donors who make so many things possible for our students. And I will say that already in my short time here, and in case you don't know, I became the college's president January 16th. I will already say this is my second favorite event. And the second is because next week's our commencement, and that will be our favorite. But with this celebration today and recognition today, part of why I say it's my second favorite is that we get to say thank you to our donors for helping to make a college education accessible and opportunities accessible for our students. And as you all know, education helps us all achieve that option or the opportunity. And it's not lost on me that without your support, we couldn't do what we do as a college in supporting our students and helping them achieve their dreams. So you're a huge part of that. And I just want to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you um, for doing that. And I'm so, so proud of the work that we get to do here with our students. And our students are the thing that we're most proud of. And that's why commencement's my favorite event of the year and should be, is that we get to celebrate the success of our students and help celebrate them as they enter into the next phase of their life. So without um, repeating myself too much, again, I just want to say thank you for your generosity. You help our students achieve their life goals. 
without you, we couldn't do what we do. And I know as, as the new president, it's just such an honor to work in a community where we have the support that we do from you in making um, our work here possible. So again, thank you and, and good morning. Thank you, Dr. Lepper. GRCC is lucky to have you. The next portion of our program is the opportunity to highlight a scholarship, but more importantly, highlight a generous donor who had a vision and a heart for helping students. The donor we are highlighting today is Phyllis Fratsky. Phyllis is a Grand Rapids Junior College alumna who began her career here in 1968 as an interior design instructor in the Home Economics Department. Although Phyllis's true legacy is starting GRJC's child development program in the early 70s. Phyllis saw a need to provide support for women who were re-entering the workplace after having children. Phyllis also started the Phyllis Fratsky Child Development Scholarship in 1986 as part of the Million Dollar Faculty Club. This scholarship provides support to students who are pursuing a degree in early childhood education, as well as students whose children are enrolled in the laboratory preschool. In 2015, we had the privilege of naming a new building on campus after Phyllis, the Phyllis Fratsky Early Childhood Learning Laboratory. Phyllis, it's an honor to have a building on this campus bear your name. Phyllis is here with us today, joined by her daughters, Karen Walker, who is also a retired GRCC professor, and Michelle Reynolds. Also with us today is Phyllis's scholarship recipient, Gretchen Tenhoff. Thank you all for being here today so we can celebrate and thank you. And now I ask you to turn your attention to the screen to hear a bit more about Phyllis's impact and legacy at GRCC. I came back to JC and my biggest problem was trying to find care for my children while I attended school. So I was very willing to help with these, trying to find uh, spaces for these children, but it was a big problem. Phyllis was a visionary. I give her such credit for planting seeds that allowed it to develop in the way that it did. Because she was determined, um, never accepted anything less than excellence. Really motivated the students she worked with, as well as the faculty and staff, to reach that level of excellence and expectation that she had for them. It's creating a pathway for more people to grow, in the skill set needed to pour into these next generations of children coming up. I think that is, I think that's amazing to want to see change so much that you make it your legacy. So she did two things. She looked into how do we get childcare here on campus, but even more importantly, she looked at how do we prepare people to teach in those childcare programs. And when she established our program, she centered it around what was then the JC Preschool, and its main purpose was to be a lab site with students. There you go. Oh, the bear is so happy. Like, okay, now you have a lab. I was like, what, what does that mean? How do you do lab in early childhood? And then I walked in and realized that we were actually going to be observing a classroom, like as it goes. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I received the Phyllis Fratsky Child Development Scholarship, which was really exciting for me because it just shows that someone else is also passionate about child development, as passionate as I am. It was really overwhelming. Um, it's really hard to go back to school when your family depends on your income and you have young kids to take care of, like in my case. It cleared mental space for me to learn Scholarships like this help them to pursue James and then to be successful on that path. I think thank you seems so minimal, but it can make the world of difference. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. When you're donating your money and giving it to people like me, you're not only just pouring into 
my life, but you're pouring into the next generation of children as well that I will be teaching. So I just want to say thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Phyllis, for what you have done for the college and our students. Your legacy impacts the teeniest of raters all the way up to college students. Thank you. Now is the time in the program when we hear from our very own scholarship recipients. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our first student speaker this morning, Jamila Williams. Jamila is the recipient of the Plastic Scholarship and the GRCC Foundation Scholarship. <clears throat> Good morning. You know, someone once told me to break your fears <laughs> is to participate in something that you are not comfortable in doing, and this is definitely one of the things that, <laughs> that I've never done. It's a lot of people here. <laughs> So I'm trying to shake off my, my nerves here, sorry. Um, my name is Jamila Williams, and I am definitely honored to be the recipient of the GRCC Foundation Grant and the Plastic Scholarship Grant. I also received a grant from the work, One Workforce Program. Yes. <laughs> I know that many of you have probably heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And you tend to only hear this saying applied when you're like at the elementary or middle school level. But as you get older, people assume that it doesn't apply. But yet that village is still there whether you realize it or not. Growing up, I have always had a strong village with lots of support from my family and friends as well as others throughout the community. My parents are the foundation of my village. I had the, my first child at the age of 15, and although that caused a small hurdle on my path to reach my goals, it never stopped me from getting an education. I went on to eventually receiving my first associates from GRCC back in 2000. Around that time, my mother was also completing her degree, so this was a huge milestone for my family. I went on even further, eventually receiving a bachelor's and a master's degree from GVSU. By then, I was a single mother of four children. In 2013, an unfortunate event took me from society for eight years. I lost everything from property, materialistic items, money, even close family and friends. I felt very lost. The thoughts of me being in my 40s with a math degree, I really didn't know what I was going to do. However, my foundation was there. She's still there, my mother, my rock, and she's here today. Oh, I'm sorry. I told myself I wasn't going to cry. I tried so hard. Sorry. <laughs> My mother once told me that they may have t taken your teaching certificate, but they can never take the knowledge and skills that you have embedded in you. She is always reminding me that I am a strong woman. As a returning citizen, the first door that was off, opened for me was by Mr. Kenyatta Brame, who is also here today and is part of my village. He extended the opportunity for immediate employment for me at Cascade Engineering as a machine operator. I remember on my first day of the job, I was in awe to see a woman in a technical role in this male dominant field. My desire for engineering escalated, and I knew I wanted to do something like that. I wanted to work on machines, too. Soon after I became a material handler, it was then that I realized that I can be something great in this field, but I knew nothing about plastics. 
So in the winter of 2022, I enrolled at GRCC in the plastics and polymer engineering program. Unfortunately, with my first degree, I was maxed out on receiving any financial aid assistance. I knew that I could not afford completing this entire program without trying to get at, while trying to get back on my feet. Thankfully, my employer helps me with tuition, but would only cover a certain portion per year. So during my first semester, I enrolled in three classes and two of them were instructed by Mr. Scott Lampy, who is also here today. Thank you. He is also, <laughs> he is another part of my village. This man is more than just a teacher. He is a motivator for times that I would get frustrated and discouraged. He is like an advisor, making sure that I had a strategic flow when and what order to take my classes. He also was the one to inform me of the opportunities for scholarships and he was the main influencer for my current position that I have now as a material engineering technician. Not only did he notify me of the position when I was discouraged thinking that I was not qualified enough, he assured me that I would be great at it because he taught me the skills that I needed to, pers to persevere for the position. As my village continues to grow larger with many others that I don't have time to highlight today, most of which are not even part of my family, but are people who want me to be successful and achieve greater in life. Next week, I will be graduating with an associate's in plastics and polymer engineering. <laughs> I was determined to complete this degree so that I would not only make advancements with my employment, but to, to gain a stronger knowledge in the field of plastics. I would not have been able to complete this program within three full-time semesters if it wasn't for the tremendous financial blessings that I have received. I must acknowledge and give thanks to the donors who, all, who have relieved financial burdens, not only for myself, but for all the recipients. Because without you, dreams and goals would be difficult to be reached. You are part of my village. And because of your support, my village stands stronger than it has ever been before. One day I hope to be able to pay it forward, just as, to help others just as you helped me. I am truly, truly blessed and grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Jamila, for sharing your incredible story of perseverance and resilience with us. I also want to add that Jamila's daughter currently attends GRCC and is a student in our Sekia Institute for Culinary Education, who also received a scholarship. <laughs> Jamila, you are a role model for your children and so many others. You should be extremely proud of your hard work and I know you will continue to do great things. I would now like to introduce our next student speaker, Joel Reyes Hernandez, who is the recipient of the GRCC Foundation Scholarship. Joel. Ooh, after Yamila, yeah? <laughs> can we close with her, please? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Joel Reyes Hernandez. I'm 30 years old, and I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. I am a GRCC student and a GRCC scholarship recipient. It is a pleasure for me to be here. As a student, my life faced contact 
changes and challenges. We all come from different backgrounds and that make us unique and diverse. It was not in my mind to leave my country. I was determined to do my best work on my education and continue to keep going. I will talk a little bit about my journey. I was forced to leave my country after I was assaulted in the street one night. While I was working to home from a long day of work in school, two guys on a motorcycle intersect me on a dark spot, spot near to the main street. I was cocked to the ground and I couldn't understand why this was happening to me. I was, it was off, it's not the worst day of my life. I really felt so vulnerable, so fragile, so unprotected, just for being gay. After not feeling safe, I, dece I decided to leave my country. I came to the US in August 2020. I've, I left everything behind and came as an asylum seeker. I came here to a new country with a different language, culture, and a lot of things to explore. After a year and a half living here, setting up my life, I decided to continue with my education even though I knew it could be, it will be not easy for me. I started the process and, and from the first time I walked into the RCC, I felt I belong here. Although I knew the experience could be a little bit, little bit more complicated for me because I was not eligible for financial assistance due to my immigration status. So I started work more hours and there was a moment when I was having three part-time jobs and attending school full-time. Not easy. I started without family here or someone, someone I can rely on. It was really challenging for me to keep going. I met Sarah Rose, an advisor, who told me about this scholarship. I did the application, and they awarded me with the GRCC Foundation Scholarship. I really want to let you know that what you're doing is giving, giving a great opportunity to those like me whose lives has been challenging, the opportunity to keep going in my education. Thank you for your generous support and for giving us hope. In closing, I want to thank you all for what you're doing. You are giving us the opportunity to continue our education you are a change makers by giving others the chance to succeed in life. As a part of a represented community, I really appreciate what you're doing for all of us by opening the door to a better education. As Gandhi said, the future depends on what we're doing in the present, and you are now making a better space for many students in Grand Rapids by doing this, you are helping the generation to become a solid humans who will make a huge change and contribution to our society. Thank you again for your generous support and contributing to our education and progress. Let's keep making American proud. Thank you so much. Joel, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You were faced with obstacles that many of us may not have had the strength to overcome, but you did and are succeeding. We are very proud of you, and you too will continue to do great things. We have had a wonderful, powerful morning together, but before I ask our closing speaker to come up, I want to share a quick personal story with you. Many years ago, but please don't ask me how many, <laughs> I was at an event just like this for students who were awarded a scholarship to attend GRCC. I was right out of high school and would be attending GRCC in the fall. 
The first person I met at GRCC was Mr. Ed Wagner. Many of our retirees would know him. He at the time was the executive to the president. Mr. Wagner made me feel like I belonged even before I was a student. And as Joel shared with us, feeling like you belong is so important. Mr. Wagner and I became colleagues and friends still to this day. Mr. Wagner was part of my village, my GRCC village. And as we heard from Jamila today, the village is a critical piece to all of our success. So students, my one piece of advice for you is to remain connected to your donor. They are now part of your village. Actually, we at GRCC are all part of your village. And to our donors, thank you for in your incredible generosity and for creating these opportunities so our students can pursue their dreams. As I wrap up, I want to thank a few individuals for making this event happen. To our creative dining staff, who prepared the wonderful breakfast for us this morning. Thank you. Our media technologies department for producing the video we saw earlier today. And our GRCC Foundation and college advancement teams for their countless hours of work pulling this event together. Thank you, everyone. And now to close the program, it is my pleasure to introduce Nancy Ayers, Vice Chairperson of the GRCC Foundation Board. Good morning. I love this event. What a great way to start your morning with such inspiring stories. So for our donors, thank you for the, the part you play in making this happen. To our students, congratulations on your success. And we'd like to invite you to become a donor at some point in the future when you're financially able to do that. We would certainly love to have you as a donor and you would be able to kind of complete that circle and help other students along the way. So thank you very much for coming today. We look forward to seeing you next year at this event. And if you need a parking pass, you can get it right where you picked up your name tags. And again, this has been a, a great way to start our day. And I hope it continues for you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you and we'll see you next year.